Hello, friends. It's Kat from Meow Meow Kapow. Today, we're doing things a bit different, and we'll be hearing a tale from Todd the Turtle, inspired by a conversation with an author friend and told from Todd's perspective. All the materials used will be down in the doobly-doo, as well as a link to the first book in that author's series if you're interested. Fair warning, it is not a book for kids. So, sit back, relax, and let's hear from our main turtle, Todd. Oh, and please consider throwing a like and subscribe my way if you haven't already. Oh man, I remember this one time I had the absolute best meal ever, you guys. I'd been cruising around near the swells for a couple of days looking for something to snoop since the humans usually like to lose some pretty cool stuff out that way, and I like to learn more about it. Nothing was really coming up that I hadn't seen before, mostly just trash if I'm really honest here, but I kept feeling like I was going crazy because every time I started to think about leaving, I could swear I was hearing whispers telling me to come back or to go a certain way or just begging, saying, please. Really, I didn't have anything better to do and part of me was pretty sure that even if I was crazy, my curiosity hasn't actually gotten me into anything I haven't been able to get out of before, so I may as well just follow along with the mysterious whispers in my mind because at least it's better than staring hypnotized at some dancing sea vines for a few hours. You know how sometimes you'll catch a whiff of something and then it'll be gone for a while but you'll suddenly get a hint of it again just when you were about to give up on it? That's what following these whispers was like. Every now and then, I'd just barely hear an encouraging, keep going, or thank you, and I'd know I was on the right track. Probably, I'd been swimming for a few hours before I realized I'd started muttering to myself in response, keeping up a conversation with who I was pretty sure was nobody, especially because they never really responded. It didn't really help that almost everyone I passed gave me really suspicious looks before darting away from the kooky turtle talking to no one and occasionally giggling at his own jokes. I was just starting to tell my favorite one about a fish swimming into a wall when the voices all screamed, STOP! As loud and panicked as any kind of crowd might do so that they had me halting right quick. Up to that point, I'd sort of stopped paying attention to what was going on and just kept swimming, as it were, figuring I'd get wherever I was going eventually, even if it wasn't anywhere I'd planned to be. Given that what loomed before me was a whole dang pit of snarling electric eels, yeah, I'm pretty sure I hadn't planned to be here. Seriously, there had to have been hundreds of them down there, snapping at each other and making the whole area sizzle with lightning. We weren't particularly deep down, but if I didn't know any better, I'd say I was topside during daylight with how big that ball of brightness they were making was. It was pretty cool to see, in all honesty, but under all the snarling and yipping and jaws snapping, I kept hearing screaming. Small, quiet screams that sounded a lot like the whispers that brought me to this beautiful nightmare den in the first place. Which didn't really make sense to me since the only things out here were the eels, and it wasn't exactly easy to see much else given the whole, you know, giant mass of wiggly dudes throwing all that bright light around. Still, something told me to look right in the middle of the pit. It may have literally been the voice that said, look into the middle of the pit, but I'm not really sure anymore. After a bit of squinting, I started to notice that sometimes a little glimmer of something would show up right in the middle of all that mess. It was shining too, but like... Pearl shining, not like lightning shining. I only caught a glimpse or two, and only when the fighting in the middle dragged enough eels away that it thinned out a bit, but I figured with how the pit looked like it was at least a few turtles deep, it at least meant whatever was down there was well and truly trapped. Sort of weird that that many electros were out there in the first place, and they aren't exactly known to swarm or to fight like they're possessed. Not where I'm from, anyway. The worst I ever saw was when two guys were fighting over the same girl, except it turned out there hadn't been a girl in the first place, it had just been a sea vine that a witch had spelled to cause trouble, and they only snapped out of it once a big fish happened to swim in front of the vine and blocked their view of it. Suddenly, I realized the whole pit was surrounded in a field of dancing sea vines. I never pay them much mind because half my family gets caught up in their hypnotic movements, but I've always thought they were kind of boring compared to pretty much everything else that could be stared at. They're just background scenery to me at this point, you know? But clearly something was going on with the eels and the vines for them to be in such a frenzy, and who knows how much longer they keep this up before really ripping each other apart. There were so many vines though, and no big fish or even little fish around to block their view like last time. I'm pretty sure I was the only one stupid enough to wander into this kind of mess, especially by accident. So I'm there by myself. Someone or something is trapped in an eel pit, and the whispers that got me here in the first place have been increasingly incoherent ever since I got here. Clearly. A plan needed to be laid, and then incubated, and then hatched. 
but I'd spent most of the day following nobody to this place, and both my brain and stomach were pretty much empty at this point. Well, nothing to it but to do it, I guess. Nobody else was likely to come along and sort this mess out, so I might as well follow up this eel storm with a brainstorm. Without even really thinking about it, I started to idly snack on the closest find. Food for thought, but in a more literal sense, I guess, since grazing has always helped me get my creative juices flowing. By the time I'd toppled my third or fourth vine, I still didn't have any brilliant ideas. Mostly because I don't really know how to get in touch with a group of nurse sharks, and fire only works above water. But something curious started to happen. Two of the eels closest to me stopped fighting. Just for a little while. They sort of looked at one another like they didn't know what was going on before looking around, seeing the whole mess around them, and then going back to trying to rip each other apart. But every time they got close to me in their struggles, they'd stop again for just a few seconds before looking around and going back at it. This had me wondering, why these two? It's not like there was anything different about them from any of the other eels in the pit. Not like they had horns and wings and tiny little tinfoil hats or anything. No, these were just two more men in this massive, mysterious mayhem. I kept chewing on the next vine, savoring its indescribable flavor. There were dozens of them around, but they were still sort of juvenile in their growth, and their small size must have been why they were so tender and just a little bit sweet. Full-grown sea vines are usually a bit tough and bitter, but they grow pretty much anywhere, so I wouldn't call them good eats, but they're certainly reliable eats. Sixth or seventh vine in, and I was really starting to feel my mojo. What if I lured a human down here and convinced them the glow was gold and had them scatter the eels? No, wait, humans don't speak turtle. What if I put on a puppet show as a distraction and convince the eels that my puppets were pretty ladies that only loved pacifists? No, wait, I didn't have any puppets with me. And I didn't want to accidentally marry a couple hundred eels either. My mind kept coming up with better and better ideas until suddenly, those two guys that kept waking up made a mad dash out of the pit, straight through the empty patch I'd made with my casual munching. Oh, 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 duh. <laughs> of course, you know, I'm not some dumb backwater turtle, but it's not like there's a degree program at the imaginary turtle university, so it may have taken me a bit to realize that I was already solving the problem just by eating the vines that surrounded the perimeter, but I got there in the end. Certainly, it wasn't like it was really a problem to twist my fins and force me to keep munching on my absurdly tasty lunch. I swear, each bite got better and better, and every now and then I could taste things that don't even have real flavors, like sunshine or the feeling of flying, or young love. It only took about another half an hour to get all the very confused and pretty battered eels out from where they'd been fighting, and I could finally see what was buried beneath them. It looked like a big bush of coral, but it didn't sway with the currents like normal. If anything, saying it looked like a pearl earlier was closer because the whole thing had a sort of glossy glimmer to it, and while it shined like a pearl, it was more purple than white when you got a good look at it. Turns out there's a whole bunch of dudes called the Krill, and they live down there. It's their castle, or whatever, and some sea witch called Marina had been trying to wipe them out for years because they have something she wants but can't give her. The Krill are pretty cool though, and they're absolutely everywhere. I really had no idea because I still haven't seen them, but if you're good enough at listening, you can hear them. They tell me all sorts of stuff all the time, and they always give me the heads up when they find more of those delicious sea vines. I swear, every time I find a new patch of them, something crazy ends up happening, and I get the feeling they're helping me do or get or become something I'm supposed to eventually. They've never tasted as magical as that first time with the krill, but they're still pretty darn incredible. And that's all from Todd for now, folks. Let me know what you think of this little story, and if you'd like me to come up with more Todd the Turtle adventures. What other kind of trouble do you think he's been able to get himself into? Until I see you next time, I wish you peace, love, and the taste of sunshine. Bye!